And we are live. I just saw your chat. What <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. Just feel like I've always picked that intro, and it's, it's like a soothing <laughs> kind of <laughs> sound. <laughs> Anyways, this should be interesting. I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but uh, these questions, by the way, I just sent the questions over to Kevin like five minutes before this, <laughs> so it should be interesting. Um, anyways, uh, let's start off with a introduction. So welcome to the Philosophical Inquiries podcast live stream, where we're going to dive deep into various topics about life, careers, and relationships. Kevin's actually my first guest, and today we're chatting with him, uh, one of my good friends. I have a list of questions that I are in front of me that I just came up with <laughs> a few minutes ago. Uh, but anyways, because this is a live stream, we always want to engage with our audience. Uh, so if you are tuning in, have questions or comments that come to mind, we encourage you to leave them in the comments below. Uh, just to get started, if you guys are in here already and tuned in, drop us a comment letting us know you're here and then perhaps where you're tuning in from. All right, Kevin, um, very, very brief. I have another question that's gonna ask you a little bit about your journey, especially from pharmacy to, um, I'm not sure how best to describe yourself, so it'd be great to have you introduce this piece, but. Kevin, you want to do like a very short, you know, like 30 second, one minute introduction of yourself? I'll do a short, like two second, <laughs> two se sentence Go introduction if you like. Yeah. Um, I'm Kevin. I'm a ex pharmacist turned YouTuber and kind of like digital marketer, bro. So that's kind of my life. <laughs> short enough for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I had another uh, guest on the show that wore many hats and he gave an introduction and he liked the term renaissance man. I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, anyways, like so old school Machiavellian <laughs> like term. Yeah, super, that's like, um, I don't know, chic or something like that. So I'm gonna yeah. ask an icebreaker and then we're gonna jump sure. into some hopefully deep questions that we can dive deeper and deeper into. But let's start off with something okay. uh, nice. So the icebreaker, I'm actually not gonna ask you all of those questions, I was actually gonna let you choose whatever looks interesting, pick yeah. one of those, and then um, go ahead and answer it. So the icebreaker that you sent me over, Brian, was like, if you were a drug, which one would you be and why? <laughs> That's the one you sent me. And I was like, what the heck? And, <laughs> you know, as like, I'm still technically like a pharmacist, so I have to like do my CEs and stuff, but mm -hmm. the drug that always came to mind was Muse. Do you remember Muse? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I, I think I do, but why don't you describe it? <laughs> it's a urethral suppository. Is, this, is, this, this is a urethral suppository for ED. Those yeah, before ED, right? my Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, huh. So I told ChatGTP, I was like, I have a question that'll be asked on this podcast. Craft a crafty, lighthearted, yet thought provoking answer for this. And I was like, my answer will be Muse, the <laughs> urethral suppository. <laughs> and it read, if I were a drug, I'd definitely be Muse, the urethral suppository. Now, before you burst into laughter, let me explain. This choice might sound somewhat surprising, a bit unconventional, and probably touch cheeky, but bear with me. Um, Muse stands for medicated urethral system for erections used to treat ed why choose this well in a world of content creation i see myself as muse for creators particularly those who are struggling with creative dysfunction just like the suppository helps stimulate and invigorate ideas giving creators the boost that they need to perform and produce amazing content plus let's be honest it's a bit amusing to imagine oneself as a urethral suppository isn't it it's a reminder to <laughs> to not take ourselves too seriously in the hustle and bustle of the creator life after all creativity comes when we're able to step back take a breath and enjoy the ride that was from chat gtp <laughs> nice nice i should say also the questions that were generated uh the first draft was chat gpt so i could tell it looked uh, like they, a chat gpt 3.5 model <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. It's, but the, yeah. the thing is, like, it got because I asked about philosophical questions, and some of them did get like super existential, philosophical kind of thing. And I was like, eh, it might, might mm -hmm. be a little too much, but some of mm -hmm. them are interesting ones that I actually think about too. So mm -hmm. those yeah. stayed in there. Uh, looks like yeah. Tony's doing it, tuning in. Have you ever met Tony? 
Hey, Tony. Yeah. We met um, at a health fair like many, many years ago. I think it was like uh, my first one or two fair. years. Like, yeah. And he just bought like his pharmacy school? No, 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 no. It was uh, when I was a pharmacist when I was in California. Uh, true. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, Tony. Um, now, we're going to jump into the first question here, but to give context, because I think most of the audience, at least uh, a lot in our shared audiences, know you from the pharmacy world. And I th I'm pretty sure there's a lot that still follow you into your post-pharmacy world um, adventures. But maybe just for those who are maybe newer to mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah. maybe you can give a quick synopsis of like pharmacy life right before and then what have you been doing afterwards? Yeah, so um, man, my pharmacy life, it's so funny to just talk about it because it seems so long ago. Because, uh, yeah, so I was, um, I practiced pharmacy. I was actually one of the, not the first. I remember we have a mutual friend, uh, Paul Tran. He was the first pharmacist YouTuber I know. And I remember watching his videos. I was like, damn, he's so boring. <laughs> like, let's put a pharmacist that has personality. And that was me. No, I love Paul. Paul's a really good friend. Um, but, uh, yeah. I've always wanted to do YouTube since like 2006. And, you know, at the time I was like a very young pharmacist and I wanted to kind of share all the ins and outs, all the things I wish I knew, kind of be like that older brother type of thing through YouTube and have that like give the behind the scenes of what it was like as a pharmacist and living in LA and just navigating this crazy world. And so I talked everything about dating, uh, CPR certifications with Brian. <laughs> um, <laughs> and a lot of different other things and i started venturing out but fast forward to probably 2017 so this is my fifth year of practicing pharmacy and stuff uh my employer found my youtube channel and they weren't too happy about it uh they did not like me being a creator or anything like that and so they terminated me um during that time and coincidentally during that time my dad uh got rushed to the er and um literally that same week i had to fly back home and um my like i was like i remember having this conversation with my father and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do like <sighs> a part of me is like so burnt out from pharmacy like giving all this time into this career and stuff and then it was turning me into a person that i didn't really want to want to be or enjoy and it didn't really serve my per like i felt there was something bigger out there for me and my dad actually was the one that really encouraged me to um, kind of like pursue something different, go out there and just like um, to really believe in myself, which was really, really different because our relationship was always kind of like antagonistic. And he was always like, he never supported me for anything growing up, but I was on his deathbed where he really did. And then he passed away. And so being the rebellious son I was, I didn't listen to him. I was applying to a bunch of pharmacy jobs right after, right? And um, I basically, like, I remember getting one of my, I'm not sure if I told you this, Brian, but, like, I ended up getting one of my dream jobs. And yeah, Was it the uh, clinical position? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got that, and I was like, on paper, this is everything that feels like, this is everything that I said I wanted, but doesn't feel right. And so that's when I made the decision to just like, I was like, this is not going to solve the core problem. I need a, I feel like my purpose has evolved beyond pharmacy. Uh, I, I didn't put it into words at the time. I was very lost, but I felt this need. And that's when I went into the digital marketing world. And I can talk more about that, but that's kind of like, that's kind of like the path of the journey from there. Yeah. And maybe a follow-up question on that as well. It's always like very, um, I'm not sure what the correct word is to describe that, but it, it's it seems very overwhelming when you bring up that story. I remember you you were sharing a lot of it when you were going through that, and personally, I thought to myself, like, I'm not sure what I would do if I was in your position. You know, having the balance between your career, your family, and like you know, pretty much your whole life at that time. A follow up question on that is like, how or where did you find? some sort of motivation to you know kind of proceed with the path that you did like where did you draw that motivation from 
You know, what's really interesting is that um, one of my good friends, he's much younger than me. He's like 23, 24, 24. Yeah. But I met him during this like process too. And he was like, mm. Kevin, I've known you for so long. And like, how do you say so driven or motivated and stuff? And I think a lot of times, like, uh, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but I think a lot of people consume like a lot of motivational content and stuff. Surprisingly for me, I find that stuff so cringe. I never really related to it, right? It's really, really funny because I read a lot of books and I'm really into personal development. But I, be I really believe true like drive comes from internal, right? It's really touching. I never knew, like I couldn't really articulate my mission, my vision or my purpose at the time. But I feel like for me, like something that was always like kind of major is like this concept of self-actualization. And if you guys remember from your social psychology uh, textbook from Maslow's Hierarchy and Needs, it's like the top thing. Mm -hmm. But it's this continuous process of learning new things, the mastery of the skill. And then under <laughs> like asking yourself, can I swear on this podcast or do you want me to refrain? I'll refrain. Um, then you're asking, what the F am I doing? With my Why am I even doing this in the per first place? And then it starts yeah. over. So, yeah, that's the whole self-actualization process. That I just love. It's an infinite game. I I think I had a switch. Uh, and and to elaborate on that is I actually do like the motivational stuff, and I did, and I think I used uh, it often. Um, up until maybe a couple years ago, where it just sounded like everyone was saying the same thing, mm -hmm. and then I just kind of tuned it out. But in the last few years, I think I've been more driven by purpose. So I I did consume it a lot in the beginning. Um, if you were curious, let me move on to the next question, which I sure. I just flipped it out because the the next question was was too deep. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the one that leads up leads into it. So the question is, this one's pretty deep too. Would you <laughs> say you have a life goal, and if so, can you describe it further? And if not, can you share a bit more about what drives you in your day to day? Yeah, um, a life goal. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I kind of dove into the world of like numerology and stuff like that and all this like woo-woo stuff, like human design. Wait, what is, uh, can, can you actually, what is, you said numerology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically it's kind of like, a, they're all kind of like horoscopes and stuff like that. Have you ever read, I'm sure you read the horoscopes and all those different tests. Um, mm -hmm numerology is like based off your name your your uh the time you're born and like the dates your your birthday mm. and stuff okay okay and so it takes all these numbers right and it kind of like paints out your like life path and whether you guys believe it in it or not i feel like these like tests whether it's like a woo woo like horoscope type of test or whether it's just strength fighters that's more based of, of science and um or like your myers briggs i think it really helps us analyze like what what do we want to be true in our lives and i remember my numerology test was like spot on and um mine's 11 2 which means like master leader so what that means is like it's not only a leader right like when you think of a leader regular leader like a just a one I think LeBron James or something like that, right? Like someone like that. But a master leader is like is like a empathetic leader. So mastering kind of like leading with the masculine, but also has a touch of femininity in there, hmm. right? The restorative energy, the drive, the, that. And so like when I look at all these experiences now, like I look at like having a master number, quote unquote, is like very um <laughs> it means that your your life is going to be very volatile very ups and downs very extreme in different directions and i when i look at all the experiences i've gone through and going through right now right everything's meant to like for my self-actualization um into being a master leader in particular okay has has that manifested in any way towards like some tangible goal of some sort? Like, does that make you want to do a particular thing, like some concrete thing? There's concrete things. Like, I mean, like, especially here's the thing that I've re realized too, since like 
diving there's a book that I, i'm re, like i've read multiple times it's called the way of the superior man. and it's great for women too it talks about masculine and feminine dynamics but that's the thing with mm-hmm. like like the masculine energy sometimes like your purpose will always change so like in my earlier phase of my life in my 20s it was like becoming a really great pharmacist all that sort of stuff my like half of my 30s was like um was kind of like oh let's like learn all these skill like it's really skill acquisition copywriting digital marketing learning high ticket sales all this sort of stuff learning design if you look at my videos now versus back then totally different you can mm-hmm. you can tell the increase in production quality and stuff right and now it's like um i think more of the leadership like in this phase of my life it's more of the leadership so setting out visions missions and all that sort of stuff too defining a purpose and one of the actually i can read one of my um the mission that i have for my like youtube channel and stuff like something that and i can talk about the actual tangible goals i have if you're very very curious about that do you want me to yeah yeah I feel like there is a lot of uh, stuff that described that on your your website too, but go for it. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, my notion is uh... <laughs> <laughs> loading. Um, uh, hold on for a second. The next two questions are very broad and deep. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the next two. <laughs> uh i did not but i'm super yeah i'm super curious to get your thoughts on them when we get to them but it'd be great to hear hear some of what your your next steps are for goals yeah for some reason um youtube is like crashing right now or sorry my notions like crashing uh oh yeah i actually have it on my phone so let me just read off here let's make sure there's nothing explicit (laughs) <laughs> i Just think kidding. i saw something too and i i really resonated with it because mm-hmm. i was like look i was telling you earlier that i was like looking through your website and a lot of things have changed but i thought it was really good because it laid out kind of a story where mm-hmm. it was like chronological order talking about quitting pharmacy mm-hmm. then doing six months of finding a client mm-hmm. and then it didn't work but then it, there was that you had one that was really nicely laid out that i liked Mm. which it is let me see yeah Um, even that website is up out outdated now like i wrote it probably like a few months ago but even now it's very very different so i have my vision uh pulled up if you all right let's hear this is for the youtube channel but bringing bold uh bold creators together to make real friends spark spark partnerships and help others live courageously my mission to disrupt and lead the traditional YouTube business landscape by delivering no free, no bullshit courses, in-depth product reviews, and genuine heart-to-heart unscripted conversations because every creator needs real friends that nurture their creativity to bring out their best work. That last part, every creator that needs every creator needs real friends that nurture and their creativity and bring out their best work is something that I always wanted that I never got, even since I was like a kid. And typically what I learned a lot about mission and drive and purpose is that some of the experiences that we go through are our biggest motivators and stuff. And that's the one thing that hasn't really changed over over time. Mm. What what are you doing to help fulfill that piece, like you yourself? Yeah, yeah. so at the time of this recording, um, what people might not know is like I kind of stepped away from the high ticket sales agency world. I dissolved my agency mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I do take like more strategy uh, type of things or in long term partnership uh, things. But at the moment, what I have planned in mind is like launching um, my own mastermind of creators very, very soon. Uh, I literally wrote the copy this morning. Mm-hmm. Not only that, I'm able to white label. Um, like partner up with these creators and white label communities and masterminds within their communities to help it bring a sense of connected connectedness and all that because once you have like lifelong friends the journey becomes way easier and it becomes way more fulfilling because you're not only working in a silo there's so many benefits there's collaborations there's like joint partnerships there's even from a financial point of view you can negotiate better rates because you have a 
bulk deal. It's kind of like wholesaling, all these independent pharmacies having like um, uh, those organizations that do the, all their negotiate. Uh, I forgot what it's, what it's called, purchase groups, I think. But um, there's kind of like that. So it's like one arm. The other arm that I'm really focusing on too is more in the high ticket sales space uh, where I'm creating a SaaS at the moment. So like basically, yeah. because every creator also at the same time needs financial runway. And what's the best way to do it? It's an intimate offer, right? But like one of the questions I've been getting so often is like, how do I set all this sort of stuff up? Like, and even when you do set it up, it's still very cumbersome. There's friction. There's like, you have to rely on salespeople to like, kind of like do certain things. But what in my head, I'm like, what if I could remove all the friction where you just drag something over or you just like text a number and I'll just move, move something and do all the automations for you using chat GTP and all that sort of stuff. So that's like a second, that's the second thing. And then the last thing is uh, creating really, really, really great content on YouTube. Um, I have this whole series of like doing um, like high ticket, like high ticket sales for free on YouTube and also like more so YouTube creation, like everything that I learned through thumbnail design, um, uh, like how to structure your deals, things like that. Um, and for me, like one of the immediate goals I have is like to do uh, 20 20 affiliate uh offer videos and become the top affiliates for them because with what what people don't know is like one affiliate like great affiliate offer for me brings in anywhere from like year one it brought anywhere from 300 to a thousand dollars per month just for one affiliate and now like this year it's going to stack on top of that so if you double that it's going to be 600 to two thousand dollars per month just one affiliate and so I tell myself, like, okay, if I if I sacrifice right now and I just double down onto this, like, I will be pretty financially well off. Where I don't, I have enough cash flow that I can pursue anything else and play the. Like one of the questions I've been asking is like, am I wasting my 10x skill on 2x games or 2x opportunities? And I can start playing those 10x games now, mergers and acquisitions and all that sort of stuff. Speak of quick thing on that what is oh, okay maybe it's mergers and acquisitions if you were in that spot already what would mm -hmm. that look like like if you already got the cash flow to do that next piece you said mergers and acquisitions but can you tell, tell us a little bit more about what that looks like yeah for someone that doesn't know what mergers and acquisitions are um it's basically just buying and selling businesses it's like just like how you how people buy stuff on amazon and sell it or ebay on amazon your goals to like um is to like get it for relatively low and just improve the business and uh, get a lot of cash flow or sell it. Like that's kind of like the business model, right? Um, something with like mergers and acquisitions, there's a lot of great people that are talking about. It. I took a guru course way back in the day on mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. and it was like the biggest waste of money at the time or at the How time, much? right? It was like 20 Gs. Wow. Yeah, oh, was that the one in the other country? Yep, that's yeah. in Scotland. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a rip off, but I think I feel like at that stage of my life I wasn't ready. So to answer your question, uh, I don't think I was really really ready at the time cuz I know like how deal flow works, I know how to negotiate deals like seller finance and all that sort of stuff. Like all that stuff I'm pretty well aware of, right? It's how you structure a lot of deals from real estate to like businesses and all that sort of stuff. And I realized like for me if I want to play this game, um the reason why I'm focusing so much on the mastermind is because I want to take an initial group with me up to the top and just like kind of be able to kick deals and, and be able to kind of form this like really unique mastermind where like we can just collaborate on things and do long-term partnerships. So I'm trying to set up a dream team and stuff like that too. But that's like, that's what I, that's, that's how everything kind of leads to that path. But I don't know. I might not do mergers and acquisitions. I might do something else. I might sell a SaaS, like sell, try to sell off my SaaS or something like that. But those yeah. are all, those are all like, I, I'm never too fixated on how things are going to work out. I just have an idea of where I'm headed to. And if it changes, it's okay. We yeah, all die at the end of the day. Look at it. it doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> like it's just a game <laughs> that I have in my mind right now at 35. 
So uh, to take a step back to, because some in my audience, so your, your perspectives on things are so diff, I feel like it gets more and more different each time we talk because you dive deeper into the creator slash business slash marketing, all, all these other things. It's like very foreign to me uh, still. Can we take a step back and sure. define one masterclass and what, what, what is a masterclass and what is, why should someone think about masterclass? And then two, oh, I'm gonna ask about like some of the collaborations you've had because I think that's actually my most engagement with you as of late, mm -hmm. I've seen you like all over the place on collaborations, but let's let's hold off on that. That's gonna be the next thing I ask you. Can we start with the mastermind and just kind of define that for the, the audience? Yeah, mastermind. Um, I actually wrote a little piece. Let me just pull up some notes really, really quickly. Cause I literally wrote this this morning. It's kind of funny because I was like, um, what's a master and what's a mastermind, <laughs> right? Cause I was like, how do I describe a math? Like nice. I was asking chat GTP. I was like, describe, explain this. Like I'm a five-year-old, <laughs> right? Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, okay. So, so when I think of a mastermind, for example, like the best way I would describe it is like, a mat like first of all i had the opportunity this year to be a part of so many cool things like i got to be behind the scenes of vanessa Lau's mastermind and just help out there uh i recently joined my friend mike kim's mastermind with each other um pretty he was uh he was sharing the behind the scenes of his mastermind too and so you hear this term mastermind right so Imagine a peer advisory of friends serving as your council or board of directors, right? They're not only like, not like your mom or your like best friend being like, you got this, right? It's like people who are actually in the game with you, right? And you meet close friends, you meet regularly, do you exchange cool ideas, tackle complex problems together and just elevate other people's like each other's game in there. And there's a few benefits of these type of things. One, you get the collective brain power, right? So you're not only leveraging your experience, your wisdom, your resources, and all that. You're leveraging everyone else's experience in the group too. So that's why selection is so important. It's kind of like you're picking your tribe at that point. The other thing mm -hmm. was like partnerships and opportunities. So like now I'm not the one just bringing opportunities to the table, but everyone else try and bring opportunities onto the table too. For example, on a virtual summit, um, they needed speakers. And so I was actually invited because I was a few like close friends with some people in the mastermind too. So there's bringing that. There's like lasting friendships, right? Of like long, uh, where you just, it's a very casual way to just build bonds and just not be like, hey, what do you do for work? Have you ever been to an working event? Those are the worst because you're, those are celebrated and they always have a fuck, a freaking agenda, right? And so like, it's so, it's the worst, but these like masterminds are so chill. Like you'll catch a drink with someone and you'll talk about life and then you'll go back to this and you'll talk about life. And this is, this is how partnerships happen because of that trust. And like, you get to know people for them and you can sniff out any people that are BS in the group too. And the vetting is all done up front by the, the um, host. And then there's also like, the last thing is like accelerated personal growth, right? Like. It wasn't until I started joining these things where I realized like, man, um, man, am I wasting my 10x skills on 2x opportunities? That question I asked, right? Because it was inspired from that mastermind. And like, I, I, I do have to disclose one thing though. Like masterminds are like kind of like a huge buzzword right now, right? It's like very cool to promote sales. But when you actually go into these groups, a lot of times they turn out to be like glorified Q&A sessions or coaching sessions with like, no, none of that their advisory and connection building. So it's not like that, right? Like it's really about building relationships, connections, just creating opportunities for, uh, for everyone. It's a very go-giving mentality inside. Uh, I, there's, there's quite a few questions and I'm trying to think about what order is best to ask them regarding masterminds. Cause personally I'm interested as well, but I think for me, Maybe we're asked from the opposite spectrum of mm -hmm. what is the cost 
typical cost to a mastermind? And then two, what are some things I should watch out for? Because you said some of them are just glorified coaching sessions and perhaps there's some people that are in there for the wrong reasons. So mm -hmm. the second part of that question, the first one being the costs, if there are costs, the second one being, what are some things I should look out for when it comes to masterminds to stay away? Mm. Yeah. Um, personally, I would like, I'm not saying these are red flags for everyone, but like, I would say the first red flag is like, um, if there's no content out there, like for me to consume and understand how they think and their vibe or anything like that, I probably won't join their mastermind whatsoever. Right. Like that's mm -hmm. one thing, unless I have a pre-existing like personal relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the only yeah. way. Right. Um, the second thing you talked about was investment and it really, really depends. Like one of my friends, uh, she charged like 20 and 30 K for her mastermind. Right. So upper echelon, wow. but it was targeted toward a very specific market. Right. Yeah. So I know you went like, wow. Right. But it's that, all like, lot. Right? <laughs> it's all relative though. Right. Like mm -hmm. if I told you like hundred bucks per month at what you're making right now, I'm not going to dox you, but like <laughs> you'd be like, Oh, I, I don't even think about that. Right. But let's say if you're making like a million or something and it generated like $2 million of business for you, just in the sheer opportunities, would you even hesitate? Yeah. Probably not. That, that sounds just like what the future would say. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's all, it's absolutely, it makes sense. It's all hypothetical. What I'm saying is, like, yeah. when you're when you're when you're generating so much, like, cost is negligible. But mm -hmm. notice what that does, though. Like that. that so this is one. This is one side. I remind me to talk about the other side too, Brian. But, um, like, if you're trying to track high level people, net worth people, right? They don't want to go in the hundred dollar thing. They want to go into the thirty k. 100k mm -hmm. like those big rooms because it filters out people you're not dealing with beginners it it structure it if it, it acts as a filter and like everybody's on the same page so that's why there's like income um thresholds and stuff like that there's a minimum that you need to make x amount of dollars because we don't want anyone that's broke like that's not on the same <laughs> game that is broke you know like yeah. <laughs> but it changes the dynamic right like let's For say sure. if you sure. even if you do have like you do pay 100 g's you liquidate your K and all that and just go in there right and you're like now the dynamic changes because you're just like oh i need to get business i need to make my roi back when like really the magic of the mastermind has is like being compromised at that point does that make sense so mm -hmm. that's one that's one end of the spectrum right uh, and and plus actually a uh, quick point too i've known like a few agency owners who went into these like there's this um huge mastermind like a list s list like celebrities in there um i think it's called babybathwater.com i don't know how much they cost but there's one guy who went in there and he's the go-to paid media guy because he was the first one in and then there was the go -to, like in sam ovens really really weird uh digital marketer guy but very prolific in the art industry um Another guy, he was doing Google ads and he used to Google ad person in the group, right? So everybody defaults to him. For me, like in Mike's in Mike's group, I'm like, uh, there's already like a sales guy, but he's introducing me like the YouTube creator guy, like the media guy, nice. right? So like I'm the default and that's how you get all that business too because you isolate one sector of the market in those groups. So that's one side, right? But then the other side is kind of like... um not as expensive, right? They can run anywhere from six, like $6,000 per year, right? And so that one is like, I I asked my friend Mike, I was like, why do you charge that much, right? Like we, my friend Vanessa charges way more. Like what made you want to make the decision to charge less? And he was like, I honestly just want to be like a utility bill for people where they don't really think, have to think about it. Right. It's like a lot of these people are making a lot of money. And I could charge more. I should probably charge more. But like what I care about are the long term relationships. And so on one end, you're kind of maximizing revenue potentially. Like, it, like, like if you go super expensive, you're maximizing revenue. On the other side, you're maximizing um, a monthly recurring re revenue or annual recurring revenue. Like, kind of like the monthly, like 
the lifetime value of a, a client per se. Hmm. Does that kind of make sense? It, it it does, and I think maybe one more logistic thing on masterminds, and then we can move on to uh, hmm. another question, which is, mm -hmm. um, what is like the duration of a mastermind? I think in my mind originally, I was thinking like something like two, three days kind of thing where you just like meet up together in person and you exchange ideas, things like that. Mm -hmm. But when you said like, I think you said 6K a year or something, that made me think like this is like a weekly, monthly type of call situation. Like, can you describe that a little bit more? Yeah. So um, there's mastermind events where you go for like two or three days sometimes, right? And you have mm -hmm. those speakers and all that. But in my opinion, those aren't the true masterminds, right? Those are like great live events but those aren't the true masterminds because it's hard to build a relationship in just like an hour with someone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the relationships are forged. So you, typically there's like, some people do it weekly. Like I remember Vanessa was doing it weekly and it really burned her out. It, like from outside looking in, I never asked her, but like I'm pretty sure it burned her out. A weekly call is very, very exhausting. And I mm -hmm. think like, so something I think about is like, I like the way that Mike does it and he does like, every two weeks and uh christo i think he does it every two weeks i'm not in his i'm only mics right now um but yeah that's kind of like kind of how it works and yeah and it's kind of cool like some of them like the format of them it was really up to the person running it like if you're in sam ovens he has zero agenda <laughs> he has zero agenda for mics he has hot seats his format like from what he tells me it's like the that's same cool. like hot seats like so he'll have different type of hot seats like he'll have a hot seat where like you know typical like oh i have this problem and you shut up and then people like ask you questions or products seminar style he has one that's really funny where like you know you uh you leave the room basically you mean you, <laughs> you meet yourself and people talk about <laughs> talk about you <laughs> <laughs> I haven't experienced this yet. I'll let you know how it is, but it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> it's pretty funny, <laughs> Brian. I don't know how I feel about that one. <laughs> that that yeah. would be interesting. Oh, um, okay. I, I lied. Maybe one more question. What is your thought with your mastermind? Is it gonna be something like reoccurring? Is it going to be like a particular format? When do you plan on launching it? Like, what are what are your thoughts around yours that you're planning? Mm. So. I told uh, myself like what like I looked at my values right because it has to align with your business values and what you're aligned with because if there's any sort of resentment it's not going to be long term just like my pharmacy career I had so much resentment toward that career right and it wasn't mm -hmm. sustainable and so I think I thought about that and I think I'm probably going to go the Mike Kim route um, at least initially and um, what would be really really cool is if I can like um, I think like for, I, I haven't really decided on it yet. It really depends how many people I get. If I get a whole influx of people, I might need to arch and like uh, reduce like and do that. But what I'm really interested in doing for this first cohort are like masterminds within certain communities, right? And doing a joint venture partnership on that, right? To make, make up the revenue and targeting those type of people. So let's say you have 100K on like, on like YouTube, but you never monetize. I know these people too, right? They never monetize. They always want to monetize. They want recurring revenue and all this sort of stuff, but they don't know how to do any of this. They don't have the experience that like I kind of had. So what I'm thinking about doing is like a joint partnership uh, in terms of the first cohort, and then I'll probably charge after. Probably like around what Mike is charging, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, I, I really got to see. This uh, first group is going to be proof of concept, meaning like seeing how much I really like it, seeing um, if it's something I want to continue doing or yeah. if it's just a one-off thing. So um, I'm planning to launch in like August. So like that, That's like true. I'm going to be make yeah, I'm going to be making an announcement on my newsletters and stuff like that too. Like my refugee hustle one, uh, especially. And so you're not charging anything for the first one or this proof of concept cohort? uh this first one i don't believe so i might but like i don't i don't think i'm going to charge for this one i really care about the long-term partnerships uh, a lot more mm. and that's what i value and one of the things that's always on my mind is how can i make it zero cost 
to uh, how do I make it zero cost but super super exclusive, right? Like, because mm. I'm always thinking about other ways. How can I monetize things, right? Like, affiliates is a very painful, painless way for to mo for creators to monetize. Um, yeah. Sponsorship, like getting sponsorships, that's a very painless way to uh, to get like to get a lot of dollars because now you have a small elite group of audience, and EOS does this. Um, I think EOS does this, but sometimes they'll like get sponsors in the group and that pays for all the expenses and stuff like that yep. too. What is EOS? Um, it's like EOS life. I don't even know what it's called. Um, hold on. EOS is life. That a company? It's, it's, cool. it's kind of like a group. It's um, by Gino Wick, Gino Wickman. EOS. Oh, I found it. Entrepreneurial operating system. Yeah, it's a very popular like. Um, oh yeah, what the heck does EOS stand for? Yeah, yeah, that, that's on Google. But basically, that whole like they basically design like systems, very system oriented and stuff like that. Yeah. And like it's you have to do be doing I think at least like a mill a year or something like that to be in mm -hmm. Windows supposedly. I don't know how they check, but that's supposedly how it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is super interesting. Like I said, it's always unique every time we engage in some kind of conversation because there's like so many different things you do now all right i'm gonna yeah. pitch switch from this business type of conversation back to this like philosophical mind <laughs> and this is actually legit i don't even know what we, what we were talking about before thinking of doing some type of collab but this was actually the question on my mind i have no idea why i don't remember oh, but the question is it's like one of those broad questions of what do you think is the meaning of life <laughs> and what how can we find how can we find purpose and fulfillment of our existence and i say this i know it sounds weird it's like one of the strangest questions to ask but mm. oddly enough i legit think about this almost every day like for me personally and to me this is a fascinating question because i'm always curious what other people think and I'm sure most people are like, I, I feel like most people don't think about this. It's a very strange question to think about. But yeah, what do you think, Kevin? Who? I kind of want to <laughs> ask you the question back. Uh, I, I mean, I, I do have an answer, by the way. I'm not trying to deflect, but um, I'm actually trying to pull up your notion board right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I got more of these questions coming up? Because <laughs> I got to read the question again. <laughs> but... I'll say I'll say the question again, We're, and okay. I mean, we can we can break it apart because like there's multiple pieces in there, and it's like however you want to answer it. So the the main mm -hmm. question is, what is the meaning of life? And then the second part, if you want to answer it, is how mm -hmm. can we find purpose and fulfillment in our existence? Because you know mm -hmm. we're living, so how do we find purpose and fulfillment? Yeah, um, let me some notes over here <clears throat> um so the first question is meaning of life mm -hmm. i thought about i've been thinking about this since like my early 20s like in my early zanga days and all that i'm like <laughs> why am i suffering so much dude like what's the point of all this <laughs> right uh-huh right like i always think about that right and so I think it's very subjective. To, uh, this is one thing that I kind of like, I was looking at the numerology numbers, right? And there's different things. Like there's caretaker, there's the wisdom, like truth seeker, right? And like, my point is not to like list out all the numerology type of things, but my point is like, it's very subjective and it's really up to us to discover. That's why like certain people don't get along with each other. Certain people don't value the same things and it's completely okay. And I think the real like as i kind of like get older i just realized like i was really really wrong to um to just be like everybody should be like an entrepreneur blah 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 dude half the people should not they would probably <laughs> honestly unalive themselves like i'm dead serious i'm like dead serious most people wouldn't do it and i've thought about i thought about that multiple multiple times in my career and i'm like this is not for the faint of heart sometimes right not everybody's meant to go down this path but like, can can you elaborate mm -hmm. why, why do you say that? You sound you you sound like you had some pretty strong feelings there. Why oh, yeah. would you feel like that? Yeah, yeah. Please elaborate. 
Oh yeah, is this is that pro like the unaliving thing. On the um, why everyone shouldn't be an entrepreneur because you just said like originally you thought that everyone should, but then no, that's not true. So yeah. why do you think that? I agree. Freaking, by the way, I'm just kind of curious why you think that. Freaking Dunning Kruger effect, dude. I was stupid <laughs> like 25 year old, right? But also like here's the thing. Okay, so if I were to make it more objective, right? It's still like very subjective. But if we were to look at like risk tolerance, right? Some yeah. people value more stability. Some people value a lot more risk and a lot more profitability. Great quote by um, uh, Peter Drucker: "All profits derive from risk." Right. And so mm -hmm. why people always wonder why do nine to five, why do nine to fivers, why don't they get paid as much? Right. They don't feel like they're taking the worth, like they're getting their worth. But then if they were to start their own company as like a freelancer or something like that, they can get paid way more. Why is that? It's because the person that's starting out the business, they're taking risk. the financial risk. They're taking, they have to suddenly have a lot more responsibility. They're taking way more risk. And so that's why I believe like given the work habits I've seen of certain people like freaking doing Coke every single night, going out every single night, trying to chase girls and all that sort of stuff. Like that habit, that, that lifestyle is not conducive to like high performance and all that. Not to say you can't do those things and be very high performing. I know tons of people that are doing that right but most people like the risk would probably scare the crap out of them sometimes and there's yeah. way to by the way there's ways to mitigate risk but just the way that most people like are programmed like from elementary school up it's like and being a pharmacist oh my god if you're a pharmacist like we're really taught even if you're a risk taker back then like it's our profession to mitigate risk as much so we view risk very very differently in a lot of these other careers too but yeah that's my short answer. Yeah, I would have said it's pretty much the same exact thing where like mm -hmm. most people in those nine to fives, you know, they are favoring stability and it's really where risk is, where the profits, where you can get like the profits that really makes mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, we deviated a little bit from the meaning of life. Maybe we can just switch to the next question, which is another deep one, <laughs> which let me uh, show it up here so it's easy for people to read. Was the second part? I can't. Oh, oh, actually, yeah. Let's let's do that. Second part. How can we find? Let me type it out here so it's easier. And fulfillment in our existence. And these questions actually to give some context as to why I think about them so often. Um, <clears throat> I read a uh, man search for meaning like seven times trying to figure it out for myself. So I always like to ask other people. Not uh, just curious what they think. So that's the second question there. How can we find purpose and fulfillment in our existence? Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, like um, I think purpose is very, very cyclical. Like I alluded to it earlier, right? Like we talked about purpose and how my purpose has changed over time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, numerology talks about. The pinnacle cycles so there's like certain phases of your life right so uh for me my first phase like according to my numerology and what, which i really really agree with honestly was kind of like emotional balance like enduring the hardships how like and if you watch a lot of my content up until this year actually until i turned 35 um i was all over the place emotionally dude but when I turned 35, something just hit and I read my numerology like after I turned 35, which was like, oh, that's kind of weird. So this chapter in my life is all about like power and uh, money and like the wealth, the wealth like chapter in my life. Right. The only reason why I bring up this is because like rather than think of it as like one destination to the end, there might be a theme toward the end, but like if we break up our, our life into chapters, like just like your, your pharmacy days, right? Versus your informatic days. And now you're doing tech and stuff like that, right? Those are different like phases in your life. Mm -hmm. But you asked like, how can we find our purpose? And I feel like the biggest problem, at least for me, was I was too busy all the damn time. I was always trying to like do, do all these side projects. I was always trying to chase girls. I was always trying to like stay on top of like the newest hip hop tracks and stuff like that in LA. <laughs> and I was doing a lot and like I was working all the time. Like you can ask my roommate this, like Jason and stuff. Like I was always working 
and um especially after my dad died because i used as like a major crush like as a um it was kind of like my comfort tool because i didn't really need to think and dive deep into my emotions and really figure out my vision my purpose and all that sort of stuff so i think the first step is like creating space for yourself right creating a lot of space and mm-hmm. i've heard some people talk about like staring at walls for like two three sometimes a whole week and the purpose and vision and all that sort of stuff it doesn't come from external it actually comes within and so one of the exercises i really really like is like identifying themes so like if you have childhood pictures like luckily for me like i'm old school like we have those photo albums and so i like look through them and i'm like oh interesting i'm at the park a lot and i'm always with random friends and so like one of the core values for me is like oh um building relationships that's a core value of mine and it makes sense with the masterminds too now too there's another part of something of like i used to ask my mom for like chinese like for chinese school homework and stuff like character sheets and shit and there's an element of like me always like loving to learn i would go to like mit take extra classes because i wanted to because i was fascinated with learning and i was always in like the library too always taking out books I was actually featured in like a freaking newspaper, taking out books and all that sort of stuff too. Knowledge. Right. Yeah, knowledge. <laughs> and then the last part is like creativity. So like this is a part I repressed a lot in my teenage, um, probably my college years mostly, like becoming a pharmacist and all that. And it's probably why I felt so unsatisfied in, in pharmacy. It's like the creativity. I always used to play with Legos and like draw all the time. And my mom was like, dude, you used to make like things look like Mickey Mouse, like with pots and pans and stuff. I don't know how the frick I did it. But even as a kid, she always knew that, right? It's like once you identify that those scenes, it becomes way, way easier, right? And so I think those are all hints, right? And I... Th- and if you want to get more concrete with fulfillment and existence, like I think I look toward the personal brand world, right? When you're defining mission, vision, purpose, because I think there's a lot of wisdom there. And I'll pull two people that I really respect. I mentioned them on the uh, like on this cast already, but Mike Kim, he has three questions about personal brand. Number one, what pisses you off? Number two, what breaks your heart? Number three, what's the big problem that you're trying to solve? So that's my Kim's. Vanessa's framework is like, what are the painful points in your life that you probably experience that you want to help other people with? Vanessa says, what do you feel like is total bullshit? Number three is like, what do you believe more people should believe? And number four are, what are the experiences, offers that you'll create to drive this mission? Mm-hmm. And so like, I feel like those questions... If you sit with them, for example, like like yesterday, I, I was I like to have these dates of where like I sit with myself and just take myself out. I'll go for a massage, I'll go for a walk, and I'll take out myself out to lunch. And then I'll answer these questions. And I think that's a great way. And just like leave nothing at night, like just leave it open. And like that the those those like things will give you a better idea of it. And then when you're actually crafting your mission, um, I really like this book by actually I have it right here. It's like Business Made Simple by Donald Miller. And he has like really, really, really great, um, <clears throat> really great uh, prompts on how to structure uh, type of like structure your mission statements and all that sort of stuff too. Um, it's something that I've been putting together. Like I've been actually working on a notion board to kind of for my like YouTube templates and stuff like that. And I talk a lot about this, uh, this sort of stuff because it's so important like not only for business but like also in your personal life more importantly like i think it's the most important thing in your business life oh sorry in your personal life because that's the thing that will drive you that attracts like the partners in your life the your dating scenarios like the business models that you're kind of aligned with and stuff so yeah i want to make a comment and then i'm going to ask a follow-up question um Mm -hmm. the comment is so i resonate with a lot of the things you said one of which was like taking time to making time for yourself. Like you Mm. you gave an example of like staring at the wall. Someone said it a couple years ago. Uh, I don't remember if it was, maybe it was you or it was like some book I read where it was like, when was the last time you actually drank coffee doing nothing else? 
And a couple of years ago when someone said that, I was like, I don't even think I've ever done that. So I started to do that in the last probably two years where I would just have a cup of coffee, not every day, but like every now and then I'll have a cup of coffee and literally do nothing but think about mm -hmm. something like these types of questions I was asking you here. <laughs> but yeah. that's one comment. So I resonate with that a lot. The second thing is you just brought up dating. How was the dating life? <laughs> what, what, what does that look like? <laughs> Bro, it's been <laughs> ridiculous well like first of all um I, i'm not sure if you can tell i'm in like my monk mode phase right now in life oh, right yeah. so i've quit like a lot of dopamine hits uh oh. like i quit coffee like probably for about like a month or two now oh. um i'm that abstaining hurts. from porn i'm abstaining from like a lot of different things and it's like um it's by choice right and it's I don't know. There's this concept called sexual transmutation from like rich thinking grow rich and stuff where you take, take that sexual energy and put it into your work and stuff. And that's really, really, really important to me. But about dating, I haven't really been dating, but dude, the girls, they'd be wild. I'm telling you that monk mode stuff. Like when you, okay. So everybody talks about like these small games of like tactics and strategies, how to talk to women and all that. But when you can just like, embody like when you have mission driven like mission vision all that sort of stuff in your like dna you just naturally do all those things right and like people will just gravitate you to you and just treat you very very differently because it's the person you are not what you do anymore and i think that that's the higher level game that a lot of people don't realize so as a result of that like dude girls have been like hitting me up they want to fly down here they all of a sudden like want to date even though i shot my shot back in like 2014 and stuff like that mm -hmm. like in la like and so for me like something i look for is like long-term partner like where we share the same values and stuff and um i was really really devastated at my last last breakup but like dude there's this person i just met we haven't met in real life yet but um dude i just f have this internal feeling that she's probably going to be the one like i don't i can't put my finger on it but there's so many similarities she actually messaged me like three years ago and we just randomly reconnected in like ptya and stuff I'm like what the uh, ali abdal's like program and stuff i was like what the mm. heck how did I was like, what the heck? Like, dude, the first, like, one of the, our second conversation, we talked for like eight hours. I have wow. never done that before. Yeah, it's like a waste of time, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I, I just felt like so, uh, and there's like more and more layers. And I feel like I don't have, like, I can be my true authentic self. And it's like, you know, something that was missing in the last relationship, like the one in LA that you know about. Mm. She was very, very caring. But I always felt like I knew what the missing part was. Like, I always felt like she didn't really truly understand me. And it's not her fault because it's her experiences. She doesn't have, like, it's like, it's not her fault. But it also was, it was more my fault because I didn't really, like, I couldn't communicate. I didn't have the ability to communicate at the time. But I realized is like that wasn't what I was looking for. I'm not looking for someone to do everything for me or anything like that. I'm looking for someone to truly understand me. And I think like those those that that's so important, and that's kind of how, like how my dating life is now. Uh, I made a goal to see this person at the end of the year, but um, who knows? Things might change. But um, I put it out there. It's like literally on my whiteboard. I have a whiteboard full of all my goals and stuff like that. So if you see me like glancing over there, that's what I'm doing. Mm. It. One follow up before we're gonna start wrapping this up because we're we're just about to hit the one one hour mark now is is Kevin Yi at this current moment ready for dating or was that a comment that sometime this year you're gonna hit that girl up? Mm. You know it's really really interesting. Um, I took a so are you familiar with attachment styles, Brian? Yes. Yeah, so I think I took a attachment style quiz like right before, like at, right after the breakup, and uh -huh. I was like avoid as. <laughs> it's probably no secret to you. I was avoid as fuck. Oh yeah, you're avoiding. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the last girl I kind of dated uh, was like I was the anxious one, and then I recently took it when I met this girl because it really, it really kind of secure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm nice. secure now. Nice. It's like all those experiences of being able to like label your emotions, like sit with your feelings and not fix things and just like mm -hmm. have better communication with yourself and have more empathy with yourself. Like <laughs> it's kind of weird, but yeah, it's kind of like being able to empathize and all that sort of stuff with yourself it allows you to do the same for others. And that's why my sales game, my like conversations have been so much deeper because of these, um, because of like that framework and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I think mm -hmm. I like, I feel like I'm very ready, you know, um but i okay. don't know it might hit me and be like shit your boy's not ready i want to be abv <laughs> fuck this <laughs> you know <laughs> well, it'll be interesting yeah. to see what comes maybe okay so let's let's start wrapping this up and we're segue to that next question where it's a nice transition what is next for kevin Yi for the remainder of 2023 i know you said the mastermind is definitely one of them maybe that dating is going to be the other one but what else what's next what's the next big big thing for the next six months of this year i think really the big priority is like making the transition into a full-time creator and making like a really really meaningful like income from a creator because I've done it in the high ticket sales world and stuff that burned me the frick out, but really like securing that, um, securing like that baseline, um, for myself and just like playing those 10 X games because those 10 X games is where the real wealth is like made. Right. And mm. so, uh, I think that's the most important thing, finding something that doesn't like true passive income, like true passive income. There's only a few things in my life where I found like true passive income. It's like one investing, right? I never think about that. The second, like I'm still invested after like all like coins and like my traditional investments all like working for me around the clock. Another thing I think about is like passive income, like uh, affiliates and stuff. I don't ever have to think about those, right? Um, and they just bring me money every single month, which I'm so grateful for. Like I posted on my... Uh, on my youtube like channel and stuff i was like in the communities i was like hey so grateful for everyone that supported me and i really really appreciate it i'm gonna pay it back 10 tenfold through like and that's why i do these like full deep dives of like the courses and all that because i believe in free education for the masses i don't i believe in equal opportunity for everyone right like a quality of outcome questionable but like uh just putting everything out there I really do believe like putting good karma out there will uh, benefit like not only me, but like benefit everyone else out there who just needs like a bit of empathy or compassion uh, at their lowest. Mm. Maybe uh, uh, say one comment on that is uh, it was actually you in your most recent release of the, I don't remember what you called it, but like the entire it's a high ticket sales course or whatever, like two, three hour content. I don't remember what you called it, but, your rationale behind doing all that for free is actually why I'm doing my piece of content all for free as well. So I don't, I haven't shared it with you, but it's open clean tech that I just launched last week. It's actually not mm. even fully launched, but basically putting out all the content out there online for free. Um, thanks to you. Yeah. I was like marinating on it for a couple of years. <laughs> oh, thanks. But, I'll, I'll send you an invoice later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you know friend discount friend discount <laughs> can, can i put one more thing about that though too like what people see yeah. is like that free course but what people don't see are all the messages all the client referrals i get because of that and so there's this great book it's called the go-giver and it talks about how you know we always think about go-getting where you have to work harder you have to like hustle and stuff like that but when you give more what you take like some some beautiful things just like start happening and it's like i'm starting to see the fruits of the labor for that so yeah i just want to leave it off that very nice nice positive uh into the the live stream so all right that we're five minutes over the hour mm -hmm. this concludes the live stream uh big shout out for kevin uh i feel like every now and then maybe like every couple of months we have you on some type of live stream just to chat about whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, is there any plugs, shout outs, whatever you want to give? I know we have a link here, but what other mm -hmm. things you want to say before we wrap up? Yeah. Yeah. So um, my, oh, so 
first of all, my pharmacist side says, hey, take your muse. Make sure you adhere to it every single night. Um, but uh, I have all my links in reggiehustle.com slash links. Uh, it has my Instagram if you want to chop it up and DM me. I respond to all of them personally at the moment right now. So I'm not. it's not uncom uncom uncommon that for me to um, send a voicemail, a voice message over. And um, I wasn't planning on promoting this, but like, yeah, if you're interested in a mastermind and stuff like that, uh, join my newsletter and stuff, refugeehustle.com slash join. And that's it. But it's also under links too. So um, yeah, I'll probably make some announcements pretty soon about it. Okay. Well, Kevin, thanks for coming on. Always a good chat. And then if you want to stick around afterwards, we're just going to wrap up the live stream. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks, Kevin. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Bye.